Okay, welcome to today's episode where we look at difficult questions that can be solved using nothing but GCSE skills. I'm the GCSE Maths Tutor, and let's have a look at today's question. So today's question is going to look like this. And this question is going to need to be solved without using a calculator. So if you think you can solve this, pause the video, have a go at solving it, and we'll have a look in just a second. Okay, so before you have a go at solving this question, let's have a look at an idea around this question. Now something we could have a look at rather than the numbers in the question is something like this. So 18 to the power of a fifth. And we're gonna think about how we could write that in a different way. So instead of writing 18, because we know we can't do the fifth root of 18, maybe we could write two times nine to the power of a fifth. This allows us to break down the number. We also know that 9 could be written as a power of 3, so we could write 9 as, instead, 3 squared. Now we also have the power of a fifth on the outside of the bracket, so we could apply some of our laws of indices and multiply out that power, and that would leave us with 2 to the power of a fifth times 3 to the power of 2 fifths. Obviously just multiplying 2 to the power of 1 by 1 fifth, and the power of 2 there with the 3 by the fifth. So that would give us something that we could potentially then look at building together. As we know that if we had other powers of 2 and other powers with the 3, then we might actually be able to add and subtract them when we're looking at multiplication and division. So that's something we're going to have a look at, and we are going to have to think about our laws of indices. So some of our laws of indices that we're going to have a look at are going to be shown to you on the screen. Now, if you think maybe you can start to tackle this question and maybe you can start to break down some of these numbers, then have a go, pause the video, and then we'll go over the solution. Okay, so let's move those out of the way and start having a look at this question. Now, to break this down, I'm going to start by looking at the 12 to the power of a third. And if we take the approach here that we'll try and find base numbers of 2 and 3, as none of these numbers are multiples of 5, and 2 and 3 would obviously be the nicest that we could have, we may as well have a go at trying those out. They are all multiples of 2, and you might have spotted they're also multiples of 3. So we'll have a look and see if we can do that. Bearing in mind, not all of them are necessarily both going to be multiples of 2 and 3, but looking at them there, you can see that 12 and 162 are definitely multiples of 2, and 81 is definitely a multiple of 3. So if we take the 12 to the power of a third, we could write that as 4 times 3 to the power of a third. We also then know that 4 can be written as 2 squared. So if we change that to 2 squared times 3, and then we can deal with the power of a third on the outside. So if we multiply the power that is with the 2, which is a power of 2, and the power which is with the 3, which is a power of 1, both by a third, we would end up with 2 to the power of 2 thirds times 3 to the power of a third. So in terms of just the 12 to the power of a third, we could write that in this way. So if we take that out and put that to the side, and we'll come back to that later. Now let's have a look at our next number. So the next number that we're going to have a look at is the 81 to the power of a sixth. So if we bring that out and we'll think about how we could write that. Now 81 is actually a power of 3. So you could break it down and write 9 times 9, and then maybe you could write 3 squared times 3 squared, but you may already know that 81 is 3 to the power of 4. So we can write that as 3 to the power of 4 and have that to the power of 1 sixth. Now if we multiply out those powers, we're going to have 3 to the power of 4 sixths. And of course that fraction simplifies and leaves us with 3 to the power of 2 thirds. So we've managed to simplify that down to have a base number of 3. So again if we take that out and leave that to the side, and we'll have a look at our last number here. So the last number that we're going to have a look at is the 162 to the power of a third. So if we try and take the same approach with that, and hopefully we'll get either a 2 or a 3, and no other numbers. So let's have a look. So 162 is obviously a multiple of 2, it's 81 times 2. And that's nice because we've already had 81 to deal with, and we know that 81 is 3 to the power of 4. So if we write the 81 instead as 3 to the power of 4, we have 3 to the power of 4 multiplied by 2, all to the power of a third. Again, if we multiply out that bracket using our laws of indices, the 4 will become 4 thirds, and the power of 1 with the 2 becomes 1 third. So we will have 3 to the power of 4 thirds multiplied by 2 to the power of a third. 
Now again, we'll take that out and we'll look at putting this all together. So when we want to put this all together, we obviously want them all in the same order. So if we start to move them and put them all into the same order that we have in our original question, we'll end up with something that looks like this. And now you can see that we have, obviously, all of those pieces in the same order. Now when it comes to this, we don't actually need to have them in the same order as we're only looking at multiplication and division. We can rearrange this into any order that we like. So if we move the divided by 3 to the power of 2 thirds to the end and shift everything else forward, we'll have all our multiplications next to each other. So if we do that and we just shift these around, it looks a little bit nicer. Now what we can do is we can actually just focus on looking at the 2s and the 3s separately. So if we focus to start with on the 2s and we have a look, we have 2 to the power of 2 thirds that we need to multiply by 2 to the power of a third. And we know as long as we have the same base number that we can add those powers, again using one of our laws of indices. And if we add together those powers, we have 2 thirds add 1 third, which gives us a power of 1. So that simplified would just become 2 to the power of 1. Now we can actually move on and have a look at our powers with the base numbers of 3. So if we focus on the 3 that we have, we have to just take into account here that some are being multiplied and our final piece there is being divided. So if we focus on the first 2, we have a power of a third, add a power of 4 thirds, and in total that leaves us with a power of 5 thirds. We then have to subtract the power of 2 thirds as we are dividing, so we have 5 thirds take away 2 thirds. That leaves us with 3 thirds, which again is a power of 1. So all of those simplified are just going to equal 3 to the power of 1. That's nice because 2 to the power of 1 is 2 and 3 to the power of 1 is just 3. So all we actually have to do here is 2 times 3 and we get a final answer of 6. So our final answer out of all of that is just the answer 6. So as you can see, all we had to do was think about breaking each number down and actually we ended up with a really nice simple answer. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that one. As always, please don't forget to leave a comment below, don't forget to like the video, and as always, don't forget to subscribe. And until we get to our next episode, I hope that you enjoy some of the previous questions that we've done, which are all linked down in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next one.